So were we not supposed to know that book buying William had an agenda the entire time? Because it was very obvious. Hey guys welcome back to my channel it's tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss episode four of changeling the wise ones now before we get into all things fairy tales and boats i need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video i'm going to give you guys a moment to do that then we're going to come back and discuss i don't know whether or not my anticipation for the mystery unraveling is going to travel with everything that's going on in the show like did we cross into some type of fairy tale land where things are about to get hella ethereal because all of the emphasis that Apollo was putting on, I am the God Apollo in this episode. Like <laughs> there was a lot of pressure being applied there. What's about to happen? I'm interested to find out, but I don't think it's gonna be an easy ride. They came here to not give us any real answers and keep our anticipations up here. Go back, 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 back. Now getting into this episode, we open with a discussion of witches and a very battered Lillian standing on the board of the docks with a red suitcase at which we switch to Apollo standing in that exact same spot. Now, as I stated in the reviews of the last three episodes, I feel like there is a whole lot that Lillian is hiding and just not saying to Apollo. But with the whole switch of them kind of standing in those exact same spots and us not knowing the completion of Lillian's journey, in some way it ties into what Apollo is going through right now. Now, Apollo and Patrice are still discussing the selling of To Kill a Mockingbird, as well as the introduction to this tribute page dedicated to Baby Brown. Ryan. Fashioned after a Twitter or a Facebook, it's an outlet for any individuals unsolicited, judgmental, often negative and insensitive comments and opinions about Brian's death. Now there was a whole lot of poignant commentary on social media and just uh, the access that it allows people to have to you. Of course we see throughout the episode messages go from downright supportive to completely disturbing. People stating what should happen to him, what should happen to Emma, just solely based off of what happened to baby Brian and what they think about him as a father. But there is one commentator in the group that the show decides to really focus on and you repeatedly see the name Kindergarten. And when you hear all of the voices that are supposed to represent the people that are posting in this group, as soon as we get to the Kinder voices, this kind of deep, demonic it's a very strong voice and then you hear him not only saying these really sick things about brian and emma but he is also liking baby brian to recipes and food you see baby back ribs boiled vegetables and people eat people i feel like we saw the name so much so it is possibly going to tie into something later just like the wise ones that emma happened to find on social media also and then just getting back into all of the constant surveillance that is represented here in the episode all of the posting all of the uh, pictures that he was taking of himself and brian when they were in the park and whomever was taking those pictures and sending them to emma constantly always knowing where he is we even have william later in the episode say that i solely found you based off of how much you post on social media giving him a moment to obsess over brian the baby and really low-key follow his life due to the lacking of his own family then you get into the whole situation with patrice in this episode i'm like not y'all trying to get us to give patrice the side eye <laughs> The whole thing with Patrice being a fan of the page, even in the way that he presents it to Brian, it just felt a little weird to me. 
and the fact that we have Brian state like I don't agree with any of this like I only checked in on social media to cover my ass with my parole officer but I don't agree with any of this I don't like this page later on in the episode we have Patrice post on the page again it's not just a random post it's a post pretty much insinuating that apollo is on the water now and you have kindergarten post of ship sinking like i hope he dies out there and doesn't make it back versus the comment that patrice is leaving like you know come home to safe or whatever it just felt a little disjointed to have those things happening and also have william stating things like did you tell anybody that we were going to come out here like look at this post maybe he was trying to be friendly but just you know acknowledge the fact that he's there and I'm actually here with you you may not want to post so much of your life on social media you know posting there is like pretty much inviting uh, vampires to your door and that could kind of go for him as well as Patrice it's just a whole lot of we really don't know who to trust because statements like that in comparison with the energy that Patrice was giving off to William at the beginning of the episode, I felt like it was so freaking extra. Of course, we have William arrive there with the book, but you can visually see like he doesn't look like the type to have that kind of money to even purchase this book outright, even comparing him to an incel or he's never had a woman. It just seems like he was really... Aggie. But at the same time, we can also give that type of energy to William, who just seems like a very weird character. Now, right off the back from them, you know, oh, we're about to do the exchange, the five figures for the book. I'm like, we're doing a whole lot just to get to this book, honey. Like, <laughs> why do we have to, you know, sit in the car, get on a boat, do all of this, you know, conversation just to make an exchange of money that was, you know, electronic in the first place? Give them that book and move on. But you just really have. William constantly soaking it in, wanting to elongate conversations with Apollo, while also looking for sympathy from him and referring to his strawberries, his girls, as a past tense situation. It really didn't feel like even from the beginning that he still had his children. And where you have Patrice who is just there to get the money and be done with it, you have him really get into those manipulation tactics with Apollo playing on that fatherly intention. You know, I just wanted to be with my kids in the park, you know, be that great dad. And you know, if Greta doesn't say yes, like I'm gonna spend all my savings here on this book and all my life like oh and <laughs> you just really have Apollo at that moment falling for it of course to service whatever agenda William has later on but throughout the scene and in the midst of him venting I also caught on to the fact that Patrice was like why are we out here on this boat I'm gonna die I can't swim took that in because you just never know and then we also have the situation with the app because I think at a certain point just like the two of them we were trying to figure out exactly how William acquired and came into that type of money and then we get into you know his jobs and the app for the boats rock a buy like rock a buy baby everything is just too goddamn close now leaving a uh, distraught Apollo still able to sleep in that apartment I don't know how he keeps living in that damn apartment after everything that has transpired there but we're there we get in touch with Emma's sister to take some of that money for the book and pay her $10,000 just for everything that she has done so far. And after a few touching moments, I do still believe at this point, Apollo has not taken out the time to go and visit the gravesite of Brian, but we do have him emotionally state that I never got to figure out what her third wish was as he is reminiscing. That third wish is a big thing. I read all of you guys comments like, what was the third wish? You forgot like no they didn't mention <laughs> really low he mentioned the third wish outright at the uh the restaurant they were interrupted by the birth of the baby but with i'm just kind of torn there with i guess like two of her wishes already coming true you know i want the baby i want the loving husband and you know apollo a god the god making those things happen for her the only thing that happened before stuff went absolutely haywire was apollo acquiring that book so i'm like did she wish for money like was it you know you get those three wishes and then you know everything hits the fan like did she wish for wealth or money or riches or is it something else entirely i just really don't know what that third wish could be 
And then we get that text message out of nowhere stating that Emma is still alive, dropping that location for him to follow. I don't think anybody was surprised to see that it was William. Now, William's cadence and behavior began to get weirder and weirder as the episode progressed. Just the way that he was speaking, the way that he was acting, his body language, it just seemed to change a whole lot for me as if he was just trying to conceal something. William's name is William Webster Wheeler, like www.com.org. Like just the emphasis that this episode was putting on surveillance and things like social media, the web, when we do have him finally, you know, it's you, where is Emma? Why are you doing this? Who the hell are you? Why would you help me? How did you find her? If you know the likes of the FBI and everybody else with all these other contacts couldn't even find her. And just stating that, you know, I know a lot of people with, you know, I'm in tech. I know, you know, people with hundreds of computers. Emma's not only on an island in the East River, but I I also have surveillance of her recently like that in combination with Patrice and how he was just able to look him up just to see if William was actually who he said he was there is just a lot being placed on the internet and the access that it allows you to other people and then the images that we do get of Emma it looks like she is in this traditional pagan witches hooded attire once the narrator states you know crossing thresholds and you never really know when you cross a threshold into a different dimension a fairy tale by the time they get on the boat that you know william just conveniently has via his app and you know oh i just learned how to drive this boat on youtube yeah right william we already knew it was a lie <laughs> that was not at all surprising but what stood out to me was the way that William, as well as uh, Apollo, began to like speak. It just got real fairy tale esque. And I swear William turned into a garden gnome slash elf slash yes master. Like it just really, <laughs> I just got a lot of vibes off of William that were a little unnatural. And then when we get into Apollo reminiscing about the statement that Emma made previously, you know, if I was to let myself go, it would be on, you know, the George Washington Bridge. And of course we look over and we instantly, right off the back, spot the island all while replacing the wedding ring he was wearing with that red string and tying it around his finger. As William gives his explanation as for why he is there and why he would even want to come with him. You know, old Greta said, no, if I wasn't here, I would be somewhere else, you know, fumbling my thumbs. I just want to come with you and support you on this journey. Yeah, right. But with a lot of this show, it seems like they are incorporating some real life horrors throughout history. Once we get into places like the North Brother Island, which is a real place, even though now it's a sanctuary for water birds way back when, it was used to quarantine people who were highly contagious or super spreaders of things like smallpox, tuberculosis, polio, and then we hear names like Tripod Mary, who was a real person who spread a fever. She was a cook during that time and it made her more accessible to spread things like that tripod fever to other people at which they quarantined her on this island, didn't allow her to leave and she eventually died there. Now, as William politely sets up Apollo, you know, oh, there's the light, you should go there. Emma is there and he, you know, politely falls his ass back as Apollo gets his ass whooped. But in the midst of this severe beatdown, it seems like he is finding the inner strength more than before with him yelling to the top of his lungs, you know, I am fearless, I am a God, I am the God Apollo, get your hands off of me. Finding that inner strength to get them off of him, but it was just also coming off as a little superhuman. Now, of course, we find out that these women are a part of the Wise Ones group. We are introduced to Cal as well as seeing the other woman who who was at Apollo's meeting stating that she was seeing some of the same things that Emma was seeing before she, you know, lost her mind. But she knows who Emma is and she also knows 
who Apollo is and why he is there. From the moment that he meets this woman, everything is a riddle, a fairy tale, uh, a metaphor. But before even getting into her, just the representation of that woman from that meeting with Apollo and Emma, I'm like, well, every single damn woman definitely didn't go down to that island and sit on that river with that one woman with that blue eye. Just like, you know, social media and the internet, this is clearly bigger than all of that and it is everywhere. But Callie prepping for the puppet show for the children using the story of Rapunzel amongst other things as a backdrop for how do you protect your children stating that tales and fairy tales throughout time don't change they just repeat themselves never really knowing what's real everything being an illusion a monster can be made to look like a beautiful maiden you know the poorest thing in town can be made to look like a golden palace it's just like okay well if everything is an illusion somebody made that if that was all an illusion where is my wife and where is my baby what the hell is going on here some really great acting going on there in the scene the actress who was portraying Callie the transition from her normal speaking voice to her witchy voice and you know the puppetry the magic that we see happening there the puppets that look like they symbolize actual people while also having red string tied around them in some way do we legitimately get any answers? No, <laughs> but we do have Apollo say what he has not been able to say or accept this entire time. It's not a baby. Okay, if it's not a baby, then what is it? Before we can maybe get to an answer, William shows who he really is and why he is really there. After we see that Callie has a zero tolerance for cell phones or anything that can be tracked to figure out where they are, we do see that the organization <laughs> is there to protect the women and the children on the island, but we just don't know what's going on or why they are even on the island or who these women are. Are they witches? Don't know, but we do not like William. <laughs> William is there and has been there in a roundabout way looking for this island trying to get in contact with his wife and his children before we are thrown into these little cells they literally beat the brakes off of william i wrote in my notes callie kills william william just hops back up and put his glasses on like well you know at least i can still see <laughs> i just knew that william was dead so the fact that he wasn't i was like uh, maybe I don't even know even though William states his real agenda and why he connected himself so heavily to Apollo just how casual William is about everything the way that he speaks on their mission there and like you know they might kill me like it's just it's so freaking weird and out of place I just really honestly don't understand now Callie sets it up that his wife has this disdain for him to where she would want to see him die but why like why he does tell us that he has lost a daughter already and that no matter what he just wants Greta to hear him out see my family again you know just get a message to my wife just tell her I love her I want her to come back I apologize but we, we still don't really get too much of anything except for of course Apollo feeling blindsided upset and it's just like okay well what if I say no to all of this which she offered you a moment to you know eat a piece of humble pie you know if you're gonna humble somebody that must mean you know hey wow this group isn't what I thought it was at all they are in the right in this way I had them as well as this entire situation all wrong what if I just tell you no William okay well, if you do that everybody on this island is gonna die like <sighs> I am confident in saying I don't know what the hell is going on <laughs> I honestly don't know what's going on, but I can't even say I'm mad at that. It's frustrating, but it's also really captivating that you never know what's going to happen next year. Of course, we end off the episode with uh, Lillian in her older state, you know, currently now still in that same jacket that she was in when we saw her when she first uh, arrived there on the docks and she was battered, but she is now standing there. And we do see that red suitcase, you know, at the bottom of the ocean. I cannot wait until they tell us something.
Well, you guys, that was my review for <laughs> episode four of The Changeling. I I hope you enjoyed it. Like, I really need you guys to drop down there and give me some answers because I don't have any. If you can't get for answers, I barely have any myself. Like, drop down there and elaborate on what you really think is going on within the show and maybe some of the things you noticed in episode four that I just really didn't take heed of. And just also leave... A black heart there for confusion if you're confused leave a black heart it's okay to be confused we're gonna grow and figure this thing out together and i am definitely gonna be back with episode five thank you guys so much for watching this video supporting my channel liking commenting it helps me out immensely i will see you guys next time for my next review bye